Hello everyone. So I want to show you a really easy way to add some kind of shape mask or overlay to the image block. Now this will work with the WordPress core image block or I use generate blocks. So I'm going to use the generate blocks image block for this one, but either one um, it'll work for. So before I get started, I want to show you a quick resource where you can kind of make some of these shapes. This is blobmaker.app and it's basically a site where you can kind of change the amount of points. So this would be kind of a more pointed object. And then this one over here is going to be various kind of shapes. And if you wanted to, you can hit this little random button here and just kind of toggle through and so you find something you like. Once you get a shape that you like, all you have to do is just click download and it'll download the SVG. And that way you can edit it how you want, bring it into Illustrator and um, kind of size it up. And um, I'll show you a couple little things that I'm going to do. So I'll put this link below uh, the video. Now this could be any color. I wouldn't worry about that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to import the SVG into WordPress. And I usually just leave it black, but it really doesn't uh, matter because the way it works is the actual shape is going to be what part of the photo shows through. You would kind of think the opposite that, you know, when you're creating a mask, like if you were in InDesign or something like that, the mask would be the part of the photo you don't want to see. So the mask might be everything outside of this kind of red area. But the way this works is the actual colored area is what you're going to see on the photo. So you have to kind of think of it in the reverse. So let me go in and I have a couple shapes and I'm in Illustrator right now and I'm going to open up, uh, let's see, this first one. So here I have basically this shape and this one is uh, perfectly square. As far as the aspect ratio, it's one, one. Now, when I've been messing with these, I would keep the shapes that you use the same aspect ratio as the photo you're going to put them on top of. So if I was going to do some type of blob image like this, I would probably make it square. So I'm going to leave this square and I'm going to uh, crop the artboard to the size of the shape. And that way, when I go in and bring this in, I can drop this on top of a square image and only the black part here of the image will show. So if I wanted to kind of maybe add a little bit of uh, something extra to this, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this black shape and I'm gonna kind of scale it down a little bit and I'm gonna give it kind of some white, uh, kind of like white little accent lines like this. So I'm gonna copy, paste that in the front and I might kind of skew them a little bit to get them to kind of overlay and then maybe do another one, move it over this way a little bit. And maybe I'll make one of them a little bit thicker. All right, so let's say I have this shape and I have these little kind of sketchy lines going around it. Everything that you see that is black on here is what part of the photo is going to actually show. Now the first thing I have to do is I have to convert these white lines into fill colors because they won't work as a stroke. And then I need to kind of negate them from the black area so that it's basically empty space in there. So I'm just going to expand these really quick and I'll make them one kind of shape by merging them together. Now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go and just basically divide them. So that way, basically the white area has just cut into the black. Now I only want the black area for this mask. So I'm just going to select part of it and then I'm just going to go ahead and select the same fill color and I'm going to hit copy. Then I'm just going to go ahead and select everything and delete it and then paste this in the front. And now basically this entire, object here is only the black area. These white lines are just like the background. It's basically negative space. So when I bring this into WordPress, 
everything in here that is black is the only part of the photo that will show. So let me hit save. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and copy this into uh, the SVG sanitizer. Um, and I'll put that below. I'll just do that really quick. So I'm going to just copy all this art. And let me go to this little tool, Jake Archibald's little uh, SVG kind of cleanup. And I'm going to paste the markup. So here's my shape. And it reduced it a little bit, but it cleaned it up, got rid of some of the um, kind of unnecessary information. When you make an SVG in Illustrator, Illustrator always kind of adds the little Illustrator line at the top, which um, you don't really need. So this gets rid of that. So I'm going to download this to my desktop. All right, so let me go back to my media library and I'm going to add that shape that I just made. Okay, so the way this works is you're going to use a little bit of custom CSS to apply this to the image block. So the first thing I need to do is I need to grab the URL of this image here. So you can see where I made those white lines. You can see kind of the checkered background because now it's basically negative space. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to put it here. Now this little bit of CSS, depending on your browser, um, let me show you, let me get in here. You may not need the WebKit version. Um, I was messing around yesterday with a couple browsers and in Chrome for some reason, it didn't work without the WebKit and I don't know why, but I have the latest version of Chrome, but so you might want to try it with and without. So basically what I would do here then is where this little hashtag is. This is where I'm going to put the image URL that I just uploaded. So let me grab that and I'm going to replace it here and then I'm going to replace it again here. So now I have this little CSS class called image mask one. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. And now let me go back to this page and I'll just refresh this. And basically I have a generate blocks grid and it's two column grid, 50% width. So each of these images is using a generate blocks image block. Like I said, this will also work with the WordPress core image block because what we're going to do is add that class down in the advanced area under the additional CSS class. So I'm going to put, image mask one. Now you're not going to see it in here because I don't have the uh, PHP filter loaded on this demo site to see the customizer CSS inside the editor. But if you do, you probably see it right there. But I'm just going to go ahead and look on the front end. So now I have this cool little mask, the photos behind it basically. And it has the little white lines. It has the shape. And now because the photo is square and the mask was square, everything kind of lines up perfectly. And as far as um, responsively, everything kind of stays in place. It's not like part of the image slides out. The one thing you will probably come across is if you use a photo that's a different aspect ratio than the shape, there's a chance you might get some kind of overhang, which means the mask will kind of stop and the photo will go past it. That's why it's kind of important to keep the shape and the photo, uh, the same aspect ratio. So that's how easy it is. Let me show you another um, quick example using some kind of uh, accent lines that I made. So I have, let's see, uh, this one here. Let's say you didn't want a blob and you just wanted to use a regular kind of square, but you wanted to add some, maybe some accents on top of the, the photo. I have these little kind of squiggles here. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to make them white first of all so I can see them. And I'm going to add these kind of on the photo. And maybe I'll put this one down here like that. All right, so what I would need to do now then is go ahead and subtract these white areas from the black area. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to select everything and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna divide it. So now I wanna select part of the black area and just to be safe, I'll make sure I have all of it. Click copy 
and then paste this in front. So now this is basically just the black area and the white is negative space. Now I need to get the artboard the same size as this art. So I'm going to do object artboards and fit to artwork bounds. All right. So now I have this shape and I'll go ahead and copy it. And let me go back and clean it up real quick. And then I'll download this one. So this will be image one. All right now, so let me go ahead and add the class first to this one. So I had the image mask one on this photo. On this one, I'll call this one image mask two. And that's what I'm gonna call the CSS. So let me go back here. And first I will copy this. And all I'm gonna do is just change this to basically two. And then I need to replace the image URL once I upload it. So let me upload that image. It was this one. All right, so I've got this URL. It's probably the same URL, just uh, dash one, but just to play it safe, I'll copy it. All right, so basically now where I have this uh, URL, oops, sorry, this one, I'm just gonna replace it. So it's the same URL, it was just image one, but I'll just paste the whole thing. And I'm gonna click publish. And let me refresh. And there you go. Now I have these little kind of negative white spaces. The whole photo's there. It's just that this little filter is, uh, or this little kind of overlay is masking out that part of the photo. So if you think about it, you can pretty much do anything. If you're familiar with Illustrator or you use any type of vector program. You could even do this with um, pings, which basically you could mess around with opacity if you wanted to make like a shape in Photoshop and maybe have a couple layers as far as, you know, 100%, 60%, something like that, and create some kind of cool effects like that. Um, SVGs work really good though, and it's super easy. But yeah, as far as uh, the image block, the WordPress core image block doesn't really give you many options. And the generate blocks, you know, you could do things like rounded corners and borders and stuff. But if you wanted to do something like this, um, this is an easy way to do it. So if you think about any type of photo kind of uh, frame or accent, you could put it on here. And all you would have to do is just add this little bit. And I'll put this CSS below as well. And um, yeah, it's really easy. Let me go back to the front end. Refresh. So now I have these cool little um, kind of accents. So I will put uh, all the resources I talked about as far as the um, the blob URL. I'll put that uh, SVG sanitizer link below again as well in case you haven't seen that before. And I'll add the CSS. And you can go in and kind of mess around and see what you can come up with. If you are a Generate Press and Generate Blocks user and you're looking for some ongoing training, I did start a community uh, three months ago, and it's the Website Builders Collective. I'll put the link below. And what it is, is ongoing tutorials, templates, um, community where I check in a couple times a day, answer everyone's questions. There's currently one uh, full site build from start to finish. If you're familiar with my previous course, the full site builds are kind of along those lines. And I'm about to start the second one this week. Um, lots of template downloads. If you want to look at all the templates here, there's previews. And these will work with any theme, actually. They're all built with the free version of Generate Blocks. And it's really easy. You could actually just copy and paste each of these into a page on your website. And it'll pick up your typography settings, pick up your colors. Um, website showcase, there's a user section, some additional tutorial videos based on tools and performance. But yeah, this, this page gives a lot of information. Here's a kind of a preview of some of the current tutorials. As far as the inside, it's hosted at podia.com. So basically each thing is, uh, each topic kind of has its own little section of videos. The home screen shows pretty much everything based on, um, what's latest whether it's a user post or one of my posts. So for example, this is the full website build. It's a travel blog. 
uh, built from start to finish over 14 videos. These are the templates. Most of them are full page. Some of them are kind of more card style, like the latest crypto here. And um, here's all the single generate press, generate blocks, tutorials, all different types of topics. Um, a lot of them are based on things I have bookmarked that I would kind of uh, thought everyone would want to see, but then also what is requested by the users themselves. So if there's a certain type of video like this one, for example, someone had asked, how do I build this testimonial section that's on the Nitro Pack website? And I showed them how to do it with generate blocks, stuff like that. So um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Website showcase, you can kind of drop in a link, get some feedback, whether it's a site in progress or a new site you built. And um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, great information and it's it's starting to, as far as the tutorials themselves, they're starting to add up and it's only going to grow. Um, I think we're, yeah, we're at around 200 members right now and uh, it's $20 per month, which I wanted to kind of make a no brainer based on everything you get. So if you're looking to learn generate press and generate blocks and not just kind of a one-off course that you actually want to kind of be part of a community where not only can you ask questions and learn off of all the tutorials, but every person in here who is asking a question, um, that's just more information that you can kind of learn as well. So it's kind of one big hub for learning all things generate press, generate blocks. I hope everyone is doing great and I will see you soon.